ahas were what your ahas were last week okay so now we're recording so this is part two of september success series who would like to weigh in and tell us what your ahas were from last week that really stuck with you during this this whole week seven days since then you'll have to unmute I'll say something, Betsy. Thanks, Wendy. If I remember correctly, I'm because I'm fried. But if I remember correctly, I'm going to say that it's the um, I don't know what the right word is, but the way that the increase works. So if you're just doing parties yourself and you're just making your 25% versus hitting the 1800 and getting your additional 5% increase versus becoming a group leader and from there the exponential growth in your paycheck when you see it visually it's like holy crap i'm leaving all right. that on the table and so. going up the ranks yes with right. the incomes the incomes yeah. were the annual, that's, annual incomes that's from like that. whoa like, it just multiplies so much quicker than you would think right. good so. point I think they hit a lot of people hard to realize what was possible. And even the fact that this is a young company and a lot of these incomes are being made by people who haven't been with us for very long. Mm -hmm. Who else? Anybody else have a takeaway they want to share from last week? Hi, Betsy. Hi. I think my, and I'll say it again, and it resonated with something else I did over the weekend and it just kept all hitting me all week and it's make progress not make excuses and how did that how did that affect you from a practical standpoint well because we can make an excuse for why we don't do everything and we can blame other people where we have to take it on our own shoulders and say i'm not going to allow this and this is what i have to do if i want to be successful huh. so mm -hmm. don't make an excuse why i didn't make my five phone calls today make make a reason why i did do it so kind of reversing it so make that progress versus making the excuses and did you have days that were successful with it that you were successful with that <laughs> um yes and no mm -hmm. um because some of the and i'm not making excuses but i was um i had um a spinal injection last week so it really mm -hmm. fogged my head for about six days that's and that, was, that, that meeting was part of that. So it's, it's an excuse, but it wasn't. But um, I, am, I am reaching out to people, whether it be, you know, meeting them firsthand or, you know, making sure people know what I do and how they can get in touch with me. And, yeah. um, and then doing the text messages and, you know, doing that kind of thing. So I have, I am slowly getting to that point of the five every day. That's impressive. <laughs> wow. Congratulations. I love that. Thank you. And you know what's great is it doesn't have to be perfect. No. That's the best part about it. And then we can give ourselves grace on the days when it doesn't go as according to plan. Right. Yeah. Get, get up the next day and start over again. Absolutely. Every day is a brand new day. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. Great. Thank you, Rhonda. I love hearing that. Who else? We have time for one more. Um, I feel like I've been on a few calls lately, so if this isn't the right call I'm talking about, stop me. Oh, we'll take it. We'd love it. <laughs> Whatever it is, Mary, we'll take it. Um, did we go over how to do the reports last week? Was that this call? No, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, but, um, just kind of getting an overview of how to look at the reports and sortable and downloads and, yeah. and all of that. Um, that's yeah. not really my area. So I think more coaching on that is, is nice. Yeah. To look at your team. You know, I love that because it allows you to be strategic with things mm -hmm. and think about it. Let's say um, you just have a couple of team members and you want to start learning how to read their numbers. Like, well, wait, what did they do for the, over the last three months? Who do I work with? 
right. right. And so the numbers don't lie. The numbers really tell us stories. And when we learn to use what the company has given us in terms of different reports, even for analyzing our own trip reports, for example, um, it's not, it's not impossible, even if you feel like you're not a numbers girl. So kudos to you, Ms. Mary. Good job. Great. too. But that's something we can all pay attention to better. Well, why don't we dive in? I'm going to have to ask you to bear with me. I don't do well with, cause I've got slides. I've got these, um, participant worksheets and I have a script that I'm going to try to stick with. I'm not, I usually go off script, <laughs> but I'm going to try to stay on script. This is the first time I've done this iteration of this training. So I'm going to give you the very best of me um, and use the actual script. So um, if I get, if I sound like I don't know what I'm talking about, I actually might know what I'm talking about, but I can't find my place. <laughs> so thank you for bearing with me. All right. I'm going to share my screen and go to the slides that I have prepared for you. And the hard part for me is figuring out a okay, hide sidebar. Here we go. All right, so session two, yeah, I don't want you to see my script. Hold on, let me find the right one. Sorry, ladies. Go back to this. Session two slides. Betsy, I just did a video. I totally know what you're talking about. Yeah, you know. <laughs> All the screens. I know, so funny. I know I saved these earlier, but I didn't, I pulled up the wrong thing. So we'll, I'll grab those right, the right thing now. All right, this is better. This is what I was looking for. So we're gonna be talking about booking parties from parties. Next week, we're talking about booking parties at all in the first place. And so um, I think you're gonna enjoy the meat and potatoes of some of this. I look for the three big ahas, the three, and they might be little ahas, but things that are pivotal, like things that are fun things that kind of jazz you up that you can put into action right away. Or it might be a perspective that you had not thought of before. So I want you to make sure that no matter what you have in front of you, even if it's not the particip participant worksheets, that you're taking notes that will allow you to go back and remember what you heard. Because I tend to forget things. And probably this will help you. All right, so tonight we're talking about party success formula the power of two, how we build rapport with the guests. How do we become the girlfriend? Um, six ways to use the jewelry and the five elements of the party and um, to increase the bookings. And then we'll do our action steps. Okay, I've already lost my place. <laughs> oh, no, I haven't. Okay, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna go to slide four. So um, the way to grow your business and your income is to ensure that your own personal business is thriving. And the most important aspect to driving growth is making sure you're holding four, six, or eight parties a month. And that could be up to two parties a week. And the goal is that we get two new bookings at each of these parties, and that's what we're gonna focus on tonight. Your chances of getting two bookings at each party are much greater when you have at least eight to 10 guests in attendance. So let's talk about how you get great party attendance. All right, a great party starts with great goals for your host. Giving your host an idea of what great looks like increases your chances of having a great party. A great party equals a happy host who is more likely to repeat the experience and refer future hosts and consultants to you. A go the goals start with 40 invited guests. Statistics show that 25% of those that you invite will actually be able to make it to the party. And the goal is to have 10 or more buying guests at each party. So in order to have 10 there, you need to invite 40. Let me give you a little caveat. This is not in the script. If you have people, if you have um, hostesses who are inviting a whole lot more than 40, say more than 50, you want to discourage that. And it's because any more than 40 is too hard to manage and it's too hard to fully invite those guests so that they know that they are wanted. After about 40 or 50 people, it becomes marketing and marketing is not the same thing as inviting. Okay. All right. Um, if, if 10 are able to make it, that leaves 30 out of the 40 who aren't able to make it. And think about it from these 30 people, your host should be able to get five outside orders. So ensuring 10 buying guests at the party will make it more likely that there are at least three at the party who might be interested in learning more about the business. This is crucial to growing your team. 
And 10 buying guests at the party will also make it easier for you to book at least two new parties. And this is the most critical number of all. So when you focus on 40 invited guests and you invite in multiple ways with reminders a day or two before the party, the rest should fall into place. Our host coaching session, which is I think session four, will give you more ideas on how to help your host ensure great attendance. So today we're going to focus on getting two bookings at each party to build your business. With 10 guests in attendance, your parties are the best place to book more parties. And it is honestly, it is the easiest and the least time consuming way to build your calendar. All right. So <clears throat> in this business, you'll get postponements and party cancellations, and that's really normal and we need to plan for it. In fact, you can expect that one out of every four parties could postpone or cancel. And the best way to protect your calendar and your income is to focus on getting two parties at every party. All right, so we're gonna show, let's see if I can do it this way. I don't think it works this way. All right, we've got two charts here. This first one that says book one party at each party, and the second one is book two parties at each party. I wanna show you what happens. So that you can see when you're booking one party at each party, it's not quite enough to build your business. So let's look at this, let's pretend that on your own you book eight parties. You lose two just because you end up holding six, which is great, and you book one party from each party, which is great. So your next month you start with six parties. You lose two, you hold four. You book four, start the next month with four parties. Maybe you lose one. So you hold three, and now you're down to three bookings. So you can see how it sort of peters out over time. The reason it's petering out is because of the cancellations and the postponements. That's our, that's our biggest struggle, right? Is having to work around that. But the way to work around that is with this concept of two parties at each party. Now it's not always gonna happen that way, but it's a great thing to focus on as a goal. Again, let's pretend we start with eight parties, we lose two, we hold six, but we book 12. Now, I know this is all sort of, this is looking like pie in the sky, but I just want you to see how the numbers play out. It's never quite this simplistic because it's never in these canned simple months, right? They're always spread apart in, uh, in, across other months. But let's pretend that every month you're booking only for the following month. So now you've got 12 parties the following month, you lose three, you hold nine, you book 18. The third month you hold eight, you have 18, and believe it or not, in our industry, there have been companies that have encouraged 18 to 20 parties in a month. We are not one of them. But it's, they had to because their party averages were so low. So you lose five, you hold 13, and you end up booking 26. So instead of winding up with three parties, you wind up with 26 parties, which is pretty crazy. But that's the power of two. Okay. The neat thing is that when you're booking two parties at each party, <clears throat> no matter how many you started off with, you're never going to have to worry about meeting your sales goals. You're not going to worry about party postponements and cancellations. You're going to be working with a full calendar and you're going to be meeting more people to grow your team and your business. All right. <clears throat> so want to get more bookings? I bet you do. We're going to re review some strategic things that you can do at your parties that will help you get these new bookings. But first, let's start with why someone might want to book a party. This is important. We know that there are four main reasons why people book parties. The first one is they love the jewelry and they want more. The second is they love to entertain and are looking for a reason, an excuse to have the girls over. The third is they like you. And they want to support your business and share the opportunity with the friends. And the fourth is they might host to raise money or awareness for a cause near and dear to them with a fundraiser party. I'm going to stop sharing so I can reach you with everybody muted. Neil Friday, 17 and 19, hijackers came from Saudi Arabia. They hate us, actually. And so being dependent. Okay, there we go. Let me go back to sharing. Okay, thank you. All right, so the fourth one was they might host to fund to raise money or awareness for a cause near and dear to them with a fundraiser party. So they love the jewelry, maybe they love to entertain and want a reason to have friends over, they like you, want to help you, and the fourth is a fundraiser. So try to identify why each individual person at the party you have this week 
would most likely want to say yes to hosting with you. This is kind of a neat idea, actually. Figuring out what would make, what would float their boat. Why would they want to do this? And in a lot of cases, when you're meeting them at a party for the first time and they love the jewelry, that's the number one reason. But number two is maybe they seem to have a million friends there and you figure they love to entertain. Maybe they just really like you, right? Or maybe you've mentioned about the fact that they have fun, that we do fundraisers and their eyes light up. So you want to figure that out because that's going to help you in your conversation and building rapport. So let's see. One way to build rapport with party guests is through conversation and showing genuine interest in them. I mean genuine. So we're not just asking questions just to ask questions. We are truly curious. You know, I, um, I saw, a st I saw uh, an article one time that said the number one characteristic that most top CEOs have in common is curiosity. And I want you to do a little self-examination is how curious am I about the women that are coming to my party this week that I'm going to be attending? Because we, our curiosity fuels everything else around us. So we want to be asking questions to learn some things about each guest at the party. And it doesn't mean that we're going to drill each guest with rapid fire questions, but through conversation, try to learn several things about them through the, through the party, maybe what they do. How about their family situation? How do they know the host? Do they have hobbies or interests? What are their preferences in jewelry and fashion? Why did they come to the party? And then at the end, what did they enjoy most about the party? Because knowing a little bit about each guest will help you to plant the correct seeds about hosting. And it's you're going to make a lot of friends that way. You're going to find people with a lot in common with you, which is always fun. You're going to find those hidden connections with people, but it's also going to allow you to tailor how you offer the host opportunity to each one by focusing on the thing that on the thing that you think they'll find most appealing or motivating to them. I mean, that just makes sense. It's all about planting the seeds. Okay. Now six ways to motivate future hosts. In addition to creating great rapport and ensuring that everybody's having a fun time, you want everyone at the party to start thinking about booking a party of their own. Because getting free and discounted jewelry is the biggest reason why people book a party. I'm going to share a few ways to, quote, use the jewels and your five-step party presentation to create a desire for more. By showing and highlighting the host rewards program in several ways, you're going to surely increase your bookings at each party. And this is where you can grab your participant worksheet number one, as we talk about these key points. So let's review. Um, okay, I've got it. Did I get it? So these are the six ways that we're going to be motivating people to be a future host. The first is using the five-step presentation. We're going to build desire to want more jewelry. The second is that we're going to be giving examples of all the host rewards that are available to her by sometimes using our current host as the model, as the example. We're gonna help them build their wish list on their order form. We're gonna keep it totally fun so that she wants to do it again. We're gonna make a big deal of the BFF program uh, in whatever way that we want to. And then we're gonna do great customer care and follow-up. So those are six ways to motivate future hosts. So let's talk about uh, using the five-step party presentation. So remember, we've got the introduction, we have the dress the guest, the booking offer, the why story, the Q&A, and the checkout. So when you follow the five steps of the party and you practice a checkout chat, you'll have lots of opportunities to weave in the rewards and the benefits of hosting a party. Okay, we're going to dive in a little and see how to make the most of each step to increase your bookings at the party. All right, if you have a few of the items your, your host has on her wish list, dress her in them before guests arrive so she can model them throughout the party. When going through the first step of the party presentation, which is the introduction, thank your host, point out how great she looks in these pieces, and mention you're going to help her get them for free or at a 70% discount at the party. Friends that book a party for her will help her get her most favorite pieces at 70% off with our BFF program. If you didn't happen to get your host's wish list ahead of time, have your host wear the everlasting necklace if you have it or something that's high end. 
But this one in particular, this two ninety nine necklace is a fabulous reason to host a party. And by the end of the night, your host won't even want to give it back. A friend will surely book a party to help her get it at 70% off with our BFF discount. Better yet, have her wear a whole collection, maybe um, of um, uh, from the little black dress collection, if you have some of it, and have her friends help her get every piece at 70% off with multiple bookings. So that's one way to do this. Okay. The second step in the party presentation is dress the guest. And this is the best way to give people a visual of our host program and create desire for all of our jewelry. You could create a tray of jewelry that someone could earn with an average sized party. Many consultants choose $600 worth of jewelry and let their guests know that they could receive a similar selection of their favorites for free or at a 50 to 70% discount. Talk about each piece as you simply layer these jewels on a guest because every guest is a potential host. If you have plenty of samples on your table, you could create two trays, one in silver and one in the gold, for example. You could give your guest the choice of which one to wear and pass the other tray around to the guest for a closer look while you're presenting. Not everybody has that or can think ahead to do that, but if you can, that's great. The third step of the party presentation is the booking offer. This is when you give a special reason for booking a party that night. It could be a chance in a drawing, or you could play a simple game. Many consultants use the host special in a fun way when sharing their booking offer. Use words that make it sound like only you, not the company, are offering a very special deal for your host when they book at the party. They don't have to know that the home office puts out different host specials every month. Let them think that you have the ex exclusive offer that they need to take advantage of right now. Examples of different games you can play are, are posted on Glam Central. The easiest to master is Price of the Dice game. So I'll give you a quick summary of that one. So here's the way this one works. Guests roll three dice when they enter the party. They write down the number they rolled on their name tag. And if they book a party that night, they get the host special for the price of the dice. So if they rolled a 10, they would get the host special, which is maybe one item or any item up to $100 for 19 for just $10 a night at a party. You end up paying $9 toward their host special in this, in this instance because they're paying the other 10. Not a bad investment in another great party. Um, another twist on this that I use personally um, is, is um, the birthday. I will go in and I'll say, so um, you know, when I'm working on her name tag or I'm doing a little sticky note on her, on her catalog with her name on it, I might say, so Susan, okay, when's your birthday? And she'll say January 23rd. I say, great, your secret number is two plus three, which is five. And I'll write five next to her name. And that's how I come up with her magic number for the evening. But you can do it any way that you want. Okay. So let everyone know that there are three special dates that you're looking to book. And in fact, if you look on page five, your fifth participant worksheet, you're going to see that you basically have something called sparkle dates. And this is something that you can recreate yourself and take with you to every party. So let them know that there are three special dates that you're looking to book and you have a special offer for those that book a special date. These ought to be your next three available party dates, preferably within the next two weeks. Whether you offer to pay for their shipping or you have a small gift to give them, entice them with a little something extra if they pick a preferred date. It creates a sense of urgency if you only offer a few of those dates. You could use an open date sheet as well. It might help keep your calendar under control so you're working when you want to work. Stick it on a clipboard. Let your guests choose a date that works for you for them out of your open date sheet and pencil it in. Use pencil. It might be easier for your new host to pick a date with fewer options to choose from. It's very important to do that. Have your sheet at checkout and be sure to invite everyone to book a party. Okay. More ways to share the host rewards program. So rock a wrist party. One of the things you should do is wear a wrist party someone could earn when they host. As you're talking with guests, someone is bound to say, I love your bracelet. And you can say, which one? She's most likely to say all of them. This is your chance to let her know that she can earn every bracelet you're wearing for free or up to 70% off when she has her girlfriends over for a party. The second one is to showcase the host favorites. Have the top three or five host favorites on display and be sure to mention that your host gets these items for free 
50% off or 70% off when they host. A little sign on your table near these pieces adds to your display. Host favorites include more expensive pieces from our LBD line, the Chanel necklaces, and the ice bracelets, to name a few. And then, statement jewels. It's a good idea to invest in or earn some of the more expensive pieces in the catalog and bring them to every party. Everything looks better in person and even better around someone's neck, right? Get these pieces on people and let their friends sell it to them. In fact, I'm gonna give you a little tip. Here's what I do. And when I get to every party, I bring a huge roll of double tickets. And I say to people about 15 minutes before I start my presentation, hey, listen, I'm giving a ticket for every piece of jewelry you try on and there's a prize at the end. That's what I say. And I say it like 10 times to everybody. Hey, listen, I'm giving a ticket for every piece of jewelry you try on and there's a prize at the end. So now they're going, whoa, whoa, wait, what? I get a ticket? Okay, wait, what do I want to try on first? Well, now you've got everybody around the table trying on their jewelry. And the fun thing is that they're showing it to their friends and their friends get in it and they go, wait, no, 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 I like it, but no, I, I need to try that one on. I need to have that one. And the next thing you know, they've all tried on a lot of the jewelry. They all have tickets in their hand and that's how you know that they're engaged in the jewelry. So get the pieces on the people and let their friends sell it to them. Friends will tell them how good they look and how much they need to have that piece. This opens the door to you helping them save money and get even more jewelry by booking the party. Customers love hearing about cost per wear. You can buy a new dress you'll wear once for $100 to $200, or you can wear a staple dress from your closet with a new necklace that you can wear with so many different things for years to come. A $100 necklace that you wear 20 times is only $5 per wear, and you look amazing each time you wear it. A $100 dress you only wear once costs $100 per wear, and you look great once. Jewelry is a great wardrobe investment. And you can add several pieces for under $100 when you host a party. Okay, another way to book for parties is to get everyone creating their own wish list at the party. And this is how I use this little ticket game, is because now they're trying on the jewelry even before I start talking, and they can start making their wish list. So as we talk about these points, you can write down a few ideas that you want to try on participant worksheet number four. So the first one is layer it on. Be intentional with the jewelry you wear to the party and the items you put on your guests. Never stop with just one necklace or one bracelet. Show how much better everything looks when layered because they'll want it all. Catalog post-its. Pass out little post-it notes so they can tag all of their favorites in the catalog that has their name on it. Let them know that you're always looking to add new pieces to your display and you're trying to get a feel for everyone's favorites. So you want to find out what they like in the catalog. Use the wish list section of their order form to, to fill out their must-haves. Um, you could even offer a another drawing ticket for each must-have item they add to their wish list. That's a fun idea. Since you're going to do a little drawing at the end anyway, let's see if you can get people to fill out a wish list for you. And then gift giving. Encourage all guests to think of the gift giving opportunities they have coming up. Birthdays, special occasions, Christmas. Show them how to save hundreds on their gift giving budget by hosting a fun get together with friends. And let them know that you offer personal shopping assistance to their significant others for birthdays and holidays too. That's a big deal right now, in fact, because you can say, oh, your wish list is huge. Do you want to give me somebody's phone number or email address <laughs> that I can give them this list? Because I'm happy to make somebody's gift, um, gift shopping uh, a whole lot easier this season. Okay, keeping it fun. Creating a fun, Party experience is also an important part of getting more bookings because would you want to repeat a boring, dull, or high-pressure party with your friends? Potential hosts want their friends to want to come to the party, so you must make sure it's an enjoyable experience. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be the life of the party at all, but the key is to create um, um, an air of, uh, of fun with the jewelry and the interaction because they will create the fun if they have something to do. And of course, wine always helps too. People are drinking wine. What are you doing? Okay, I'm talking to my dog. She's doing something crazy over here. Follow the five step party presentation to keep your parties fun, fast, and easy. Steps two and three 
in the five part party really help with getting more bookings and add elements of fun and interaction. And here are some additional ways to keep the fun in the party. And you can write these down on participant worksheet number four as well. We want to offer some fun party themes. You can get as creative as you want with this and you can mention these while you're doing your presentation and talking about booking a party. You can give them some of these suggestions. So it's a great way to ensure a great attendance at a party where there might be some repeat guests with themed invitations and snacks and games and a little simple decor. You can really mix things up and create a lot of fun. You can go over the, this list with each guest who shows interest during checkout. So wine and shine, pumpkin spice and everything ice. That's cute. Fashion Fiesta with margaritas and nachos. Um, fashion Power Hour. I like that idea. Um, um, jewelry Makes Me Happy Hour is a great one. I use that a lot. Bling Birthday Bash, of course, is, um, is a good one for, so when you want to go through people's Facebook pages and, or you, you can see the birthdays among all your friends. And if you get a month ahead, you can figure out who's got birthdays in October and start offering them a birthday bling bash where they get all the jewelry. Okay, because that does make it fun. All right, let's make a big deal about her BFFs. Use our BFF coupons to illustrate the great discount that they are giving their friend, the host, when they decide to have a fun ladies' night too. Memorize, this is interesting, memorize the 70% off price of several of our most popular but higher priced items. Whenever someone picks that piece up or looks at it, be sure to tell them how to get it at a great saving. So for example, an $89 item like our silver ice bracelets are $26.70 with the BFF discount. And so it might be that what you would say is, you know, when you do your own party, you can get things at 70% off when your friends book. So something like this $89 ice bracelet would only be $26.70 with a BFF discount from your own party. So they start to see the tangibles um, in, uh, in booking a party and how it relates to their wish list. Last, but certainly not least, you've got to have a strong checkout chat. It doesn't matter what you do during the party to generate excitement and creating desire for more if you don't ask them if they'd like to book a party. Rewatch the party presentation videos to see how our consultants ask their guests at checkout if they want to book a party. This is simply a skill that requires practice. Don't prejudge who would or would not want to be a host. Offer it to everyone. And remember, a booking isn't a booking until there's a date. Be sure to pencil a date in during checkout, and you can confirm that the date works the following day. Get, find, fi this is off script, but find verbiage that you like, that you feel comfortable with. My, the verbiage that I'm comfortable with is to say, you know, I sure hope you're thinking about doing your own party sometime soon. So I didn't ask a question. I didn't put anybody on the spot. I just simply said what I'm hoping she's going to do. I sure hope you're thinking about doing your own party sometime soon. And then, I, and then I'm watching her face. And then I say, well, what do, you, what do you think about that? And then I listen for an answer. That way she's not really saying no or yes. She's going to tell me what she thinks about it. <laughs> so you never know. But, you know, sometimes it's all in how we say things, right? That, that ends up being important. Okay. So that concludes the important ideas uh, tips and techniques for getting two or more bookings at your parties. But I, but I want to give you one last tip, in fact, because this is not in this script. And it has to do with following up with every customer. Sometimes parties are overwhelming for people. Maybe they're in a hurry. Maybe they're contemplating doing a party, but they're not sure. And the answer is no at the moment. And that's where the follow-up really comes into play. And it might be the next day as you are putting their order in to say, hey, thank you. It was so nice to meet you at Ellen's party last night. Um, your jewelry will arrive within the next week or so. Your wish list is so long. Are you, are you thinking maybe about doing your own party sometime soon? And I asked the question because the, some, surprisingly, the answer sometimes turns to yes or it might turn to yes after they get their jewelry. And that's another good time to check in with them to say, double checking on you, circling back around. How do you like your new jewels? Any compliments yet? Are you thinking about doing your own party sometime soon? Keep me posted. And those are some ways that you can continue the follow-up. And that's a very important thing because if you didn't get your two parties booked from that party, 
you're going to want to make sure that you're doing the follow-up while um, they're still excited about their purchase and, ha and, and sort of that glow of the fun is still in their head. So I want to give you two action steps. The first one is to book two parties of your own in the next 24 to 48 hours. I want you to think how you're going to offer the host opportunity to each guest at your parties that are coming up this week. And it's a really good idea to review the party presentation and booking videos on Glam Central because it's going to give you a little extra confidence. Um, and then you're going to want to complete your participant worksheets. And if you really want to, I think this is a great idea, talk to your upline about um, what you learned uh, in this call and what your aha moments were. So I would love to hear um, what thoughts you all had about this and um, any ahas that you had for tonight. The party cards. Oh, what about, I'm looking at Shannon. What about the party cards? Oh, using the party cards when you're when you're speaking. We definitely want to do that. I think that's what she meant by that. No, someone had mentioned that they want to know where to print them out, and I was asking if they meant the party cards. Because if so, I printed them out today under resources on yeah. the good. website. Yeah, that's good. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. Betsy, I was um, quickly writing all the things you were saying. Mm -hmm. um, because I had printer issues, so I wasn't able to. That's <laughs> okay. Um, and I just wanted, to, if you could reiterate what you say when you're um, sitting down with someone, and what was the question, or how do you say it? No. All I say is, I sure hope you're thinking about doing your own party sometime soon. What do you think? Hey, hey, stop. <laughs> Wait, you're. But we need to stop that. Betsy, I love that you have dog issues now. I had to go buy bully sticks for mine tonight just so I could do the video at eight. <laughs> Mary, you did a fantastic job. I just want to give you a shout out. I thought you did fantastic. Thank you, Susan. But Betsy, I did like your idea of having a $600 Ritz party because that's a super easy way to just say, you know, that this yeah. is also a look in addition to the model. That's a really good point. And it, it is in addition to that, to the, the dress of the guest. Yeah. The only thing is they keep stripping me of all my bling. <laughs> I know. That's the problem is that by, by the time I leave, I've changed out my jewelry 15 times, you know. But that's a um, good thing. That's and good and thing. Betsy, I think the idea of passing around the a tray with $600 worth of jewelry while you're, you know, doing the dress of the guest is a good idea too. I haven't been doing that and I like that idea. I like it too. I haven't been doing that as well. And I, um, I could see myself pulling that together. You know, it's almost like you would need two extra, two extra trays of jewelry kind of set off to the side. Um, yeah. So, you know, cause you know how the pill for, especially if you're doing the ticket thing ahead of time where they're trying on everything, by the time you do your presentation, everything is everywhere, which is excellent. But you might need to set aside your, you know, if you can, a jewelry tray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great point. So I actually have a lot of takeaways, but the two biggest, I guess, are number one, the, um, the interaction of the ticket game that you were talking about. And I'm actually wondering, what kind of prizes do you typically give, Betsy? Oh, a cleaning cloth. Cleaning. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. That could, because that's what I was thinking too. But yeah. I love getting um getting everyone involved basically and having them touch i want to put out a sign that says please touch yeah door. i know right yeah it's right so much, honestly it is so much fun and that's how everybody gets giggling and playing mm -hmm. it changes the tone of everything when they're yes. when they know that there's a little and then I, basically i'll go around and i'll keep saying okay wait who needs more tickets and she'll say, I, oh, I just put on three more and I just put on five more. Okay, how many do you have? I got 10. Okay, here's 10. Right. I'm ripping off the other side and I'm putting them into a bowl. So it's right. very I love that. Mm. I also, I also I actually. Terry O'Neill. It's not my idea. I got it from Terry O'Neill. Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I also like the, um, the general approach of asking, what did you enjoy most about the party or where would you be tonight? Oh, hi, Scout. Yeah, my dogs are here. Your too. dog too. <laughs> It's dog night. Um, yeah, but asking, you know, where would you be tonight if you weren't here at the party? Or why did you come? Or um, what did you enjoy most about the party? Those sort of 
you're not grilling, but you're getting a feel for what the person is about or what their what drives them or motivates them. I like that, Susan. I think that's a good point, and it just sort of is a soft start to the conversation. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've been talking. Hey, Betsy. Hello. What one back to the checkout chat i just i encourage people like do not do the don't do the form right away like the most important oh. thing is to have that conversation and i like to ask an open-ended question so if someone comes up to me with their form i don't like immediately start working on their form okay that's the last, that is the last thing i do i always make sure we have a conversation first because oh, i know i can get to the form you know, after we've done that, but sometimes if you start working on the form, then it becomes about the form and the total and all of that versus really having the conversation and finding out what they might be interested in. That's, a, that's so interesting. That's a really good point. Yeah. Right. I like that. I wouldn't have thought about that. And it, it is hard when they say that they're in a hurry or whatever, but um, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And then it's, it's less like, an, an order taker, you know? Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Who else? We have time for one or two more. Ahaz? Uh -huh. I think I like the um, memorize some of the prices that would be 70%. Yeah. Like, oh, if you get that, you know, you have a party or somebody books from you, this is what it would cost you to get that. Uh -huh. I really like that idea. It's pretty neat, isn't it? It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's something new. I, that you know we really haven't seen before so I like that but back on the the thing with the the checkout the last party I did like I was checking somebody else out and then people just started lining up their orders on the table yeah. next to, you know like and they're all off having drinks and in eating sometimes you can't always control that but yeah. If they left the credit card, at least I'm like, okay, they have to get back to get the credit card, you know, so then you can at least say something about having, the, you know, like, you know, did you have a good time? You know, wouldn't you like to have, you know, your friends over and get the free stuff too, or, you know, something to that effect. <laughs> it was just not, it wasn't written in the cards to have a conversation with everybody. It's funny. I'm like, I'm okay, so who is this card belong to? Oh, I know. I know. That happens to me a lot, and, and, and I'll end up just saying, okay, Susan Lewis, Susan Lewis, and I'm holding her card, and I'm like, come here, and I yeah. just get to come over really fast, as if I really need her, but actually, I just want to talk to her. <laughs> right, right, it, but it's funny. It's just like every so often, you get something like that, you know, it's just too funny. Yeah, especially at the bigger parties, it's hard. Yeah. It's very hard to, to have that conversation. Yeah, good point, Rhonda. One more. I think the last, uh, Betsy, the last thing that I have as a takeaway is that uh, the follow up with every single customer. I'm very good at doing it after vendor events. So good. Um, but I'm horrible at it after a party. Uh -huh. People buy and then I don't typically follow up within 24, 48 hours or uh -huh. within a week. Um, so that's a huge takeaway for me. I want to start doing that. Great. I love hearing that because I think that right there is the, the key thing that'll revolutionize your business. Because think about it, when, when you go to a caddy party or a, some other party and you had fun, right? You're still feeling that fun the next day or two. You're still kind of feeling that glow. And then you get your stuff and you're feeling the glow again. Those are the two prime times where we can, where it's the softest, most fertile ground for us, you know, to work with getting something booked with them. So I love that you see that. That's terrific. Betsy, can I interject that something that I'm working on? Love to. Yeah. Um, this is from Laura Durso. Mm -hmm. um, so what I did today is I went back to the beginning of my parties and I did a hope book that Laura uses and she uses it for follow-up. So I just got a little notebook and it's just building my empire. Nice. And I went all the way back. And if you can see this, what I do is I put the name of the party, the hostess, and then I put the dollar amount here and everybody that attended the party with their phone number. Oh, and nice. then I did a page. I did a page for each party. 
And then what you can do is you can go back and it breaks it down so you can actually go back and check off that you've reached out to each person. That's and so even, though, even though I started a year and a half ago, right. you can reach out and you can let them know, okay, I, you know, I realize it's been, you know, quite a while since I spoke with you, but just want to touch base and make sure that you're enjoying your jewelry and are you wearing it? You know, are people complimenting you? So that's something that I'm working on because um, my September has been really crummy. Um, so I'm working on that. And one thing I did notice in the fact that my September's crummy, like zero for me, is that all the parties that I host, which is what I just discovered before I hopped on tonight, all the parties that I have hosted are at least like $1,000 or higher. Wow. So in order to make something happen this month, it's up to me. If I don't have somebody hosting, then I need to do a couple of parties and invite people just to my house and do it myself and just move that. And book parties from that. And exactly. So about it, now that you're going back to all these people, the ones that you get replies from, you can invite them to your party. Right. And these are actually, these are not texting. You have to call them, which really sucks Wow. for me. So you have to call them and you have to talk to them. <laughs> but that actually, I, I know, but that, in my opinion, is the best, most effective way. Oh, it is. Absolutely. So I literally better. wrote down from March to September, this afternoon when I got home from work, I wrote down as many parties as I could. I have currently 49 parties to go through and I'm writing down every single person. And if I know little notes and messages, I'll put it next to them. But that will help me, I pray, to book for September and October. So my question, I love, love, love everything about that. Strategically, if others were to do the same thing, would it make sense for them to work on the most recent people first? I would think that you would want to go to the most recent because they're excited about what they got right. and they probably remember what they saw. Now me and me being the anal person that I am, I had to do my book in order because it has to go in order right? or my brain won't like that. Explode. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to put it in order, but I yeah. did just reach out to all of my people, my last two parties by text message last weekend. So now I'm going to reach out to them via the telephone and just say again, just wanted to reach out, see how you're loving everything. Do you have any questions? Can I help you with anything? Is there anything else you need? And just to keep me in mind for any of your gifting for the holidays, whatever. Or would you be willing to, at that point, specifically say, I sure hope you're thinking about doing your own party before the holidays. What do you think? I would say that for me, it would probably ba be based on the tone of the conversation. Got it. So you're talking about if you were actually speaking to them, right? Oh, absolutely. If I'm talking to them and I can tell that they're excited or whatever, then absolutely I would say, hey, what are your thoughts? Do you want to hold a girl's night? Do you ever well, leave a message? Like if you left a message, could you do that? Um, I mean, you could. I just wonder, like, do you, ever, do you ever just leave a message? I never leave a message. I'm really bad with that. I don't. I usually hang up. Okay. So, but definitely you could. If you're good at that, you can. Lori probably does it all the time. I like messages better than talking to people. <laughs> I, I leave messages, but you know what I do then is I send a text and I say, hey, I just left you a voice now. Right, <laughs> right. Well, I just left a message. And then I kind of I repeat what I said, so it's sort of a, maybe a waste of time, but um, I don't listen to a lot of my own voicemails, so I know a lot of people skip that stuff, but I can't project that everybody does that. So. Yeah. Huh. Well, and my problem is, is I talk text so much that when I leave a voice message, a lot of times I'll put in a question mark or a period when I shouldn't because it's a voice <laughs> message and it's not a text message. <laughs> so I have to be careful. Um, oh, that's so funny. Anyway, so that was just, that's a Laura Durso thing and I'm determined to make this work because 
I'm not going to let you down. And you will. Nope, you're not going to let yourself down. No. Nope. I love that about you. Nope. Well, ladies, you are simply amazing. And thank you for being on the call tonight. I hope this was really helpful. And thank you for allowing me to read off of this script. I think it was a good script. I really like it. Uh, I think they did a great job with this series. And um, I can't wait to be working on next week. It's all about booking parties, period. And Terry O'Neill is doing that one um, using um, the, the company training scripts. And then on the 30th, and I'll be on these too, but, um, but on the 30th, Lindsay Cavanaugh is doing the training. And then there's one more bonus one at the very end. And I'll come back and do that the first Monday in October too. So Anyway, well, I hope you guys have a great night. I hope this was really helpful to you. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank Thanks you. Again. Thank, Thank you, you, Betsy. Betsy. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Thanks, Betsy. You're welcome. Thank you.